Welcome to Specify. This video will show you some tools and offer some tips for entering data in a grid in the workbench. It is a continuation of the video for entering data in a form in the workbench, and if you have not watched that video, I do encourage you to watch it first. I have my data set open in grid view. One of the first things I want to show you is how you can rearrange your columns. Now you do this in the mapping editor. So to open the mapping editor, I need to close my data set. So I come down to the tab bar at the bottom and I click the close or red X button. And yes, I do want to save my changes. Once that is saved, I want to find my data set on the sidebar and then use my right mouse button to click on that data set and open a context menu. And then I'm going to click on Edit Data Set Mapping. And when my data set mapping editor opens, I can look at my mapping file on the right and change the order of any of these fields or columns by simply clicking on them and then clicking the up or down arrow on the right. So see how I click the down arrow and it moves, it changes the order of my field or column. And I want it to go past my preparation. So I'm just going to keep clicking. And that's exactly where I want it. Once you've done that, simply say OK, and then reopen the data set by clicking on it in the sidebar. And again, the data set opens in the grid view. Now let's talk about dates. The workbench will accept any format for dates. However, when you're committing your data to the specified database or uploading, dates are required to be in a specific format. So it makes sense to enter the dates in the acceptable format from the very beginning. The date format is based on what your computer is set to, so you can probably guess that I will be entering my dates in U.S. date format or as month, day, year. Valid formats need to include two digits for month or the first three alpha characters, for instance, J-A-N for January separated by a period slash space or hyphen, then two digits for day, separated again by a period slash space or hyphen, and then either two or four digits for the year. There are also certain fields in Specify that accept partial dates. These are collecting events start and end date, cataloged date, termination date and preparation date. I am using preparation date in this example, so I'm going to be allowed to use partial dates. And let's go ahead and take a look at what some of those formats look like. Let's begin with a complete date. We'll use January again. And if I don't know my day, it might look something like this. I'm going to use a period as a separator. And if I don't know either, it might look something like this. And let's use our first three alpha characters. So J N. And let's use a space this time. And that brings me to one last format for month. It can be represented as a dash, dash, dash. So that last date would look like this. I would also like to refer you to a document called Guidelines for Importing External Data into Specify 6. It is available on the Specify website under Documentation, and it gives a good examples of other fields such as latitude and longitude that require a format in specify as well as just good guidelines for cleaning your data before importing it into 
specify. The next tool I would like to show you is fill up and fill down, and I'm going to use my genus column to demonstrate this. The first thing I want to do is make that column a bit larger, so I'm going to click on the dividing line and drag and give myself a bit more space. Then I need to fill in the genus. And for this demonstration, I am going to assume that the first four rows are the same. So I click on the first one, and then I hold down my shift key and click on the last one that I want to include in the selection. Then I'm going to use my right mouse button and click on that selection and say fill down because I want the first genus to be copied into the next three cells. So all the cells that I have selected now say the same thing. Let's see what fill up looks like. I'm going to enter a new genus. And let's say this time that row four is incorrect and needs to actually be this new genus. I'm going to click on it, hold down my shift key, and then click down to the new genus I just entered. Then I'm going to use my right mouse button again and click, and I'm going to say fill up. So every cell in the selection now matches the bottom cell, and that is fill up and fill down. Now let's deal with that preparation type. I'm going to slide over to it. <clears throat> And I'm going to use the find tool for prep type. So I open that by clicking on edit in the menu and then clicking on find. And I see from my menu that I could also have used my keyboard and typed control F. That is the quick key. The first thing I want to do is to sort my column. So I'm going to click on prep type so that my column is sorted because I want to replace the A with the term alcohol. Then I'm going to select all of those A's by clicking on the top one, holding my shift key and clicking on the bottom one. Then I'll go back down to that find tool and I'll type A into the find box and I will type alcohol correctly into the replace box. Now, I only want to replace my selected cells. If I do not check this box, every A in my data set will be replaced, and that would be bad. So once I make sure I have that checked, then I can say replace all, and slide over there again, and I see that all of my A's in my selection have been replaced, but the A's in the other cells have not. So let's do that again. And I need to sort by clicking on the column heading and then clicking on the top and the bottom, holding my shift key and then coming down to find and typing in my new term, which is S and I want to replace it with skeleton and selected cells is checked. So I can say replace all. I'm going to slide over again, and they have all been replaced. I do want to point out here that carry forward is available in the grid view. I can also add a row by clicking the add or plus button. And if I select a single or multiple rows or cells, I can delete the row by clicking the delete row button, or I can clear the cells by clicking the clear cells button. And this concludes the video for entering data in a grid in the workbench. I thank you for watching.